how do you get what you want? Well, as long as you have life in this physical world, you can play a part in using the underlying etheric forces that created it. You do this by simply asserting your primacy as a deity. This is done by quiet acts of mental and physical withdrawal of the mind. What I mean is, you have to learn to give habit to the labor of thought. That is, thinking with a definite purpose for the possibility of a desired experience you want to happen. And the conditions to accomplish this is through meditation. Proper meditation cannot be truly achieved unless you first know how to concentrate. That is, focusing your mental energy on a common center. Welcome to Back to the Basics, where you learn facts, hope you embrace it. Watch, like, share, bring in awareness. Watch, like, share, bring in awareness. I'm fearless. Welcome to Back to the Basics, where you learn facts, hope you embrace it. Watch, like, share, bring in awareness. Watch, like, share, bring in awareness. You have to learn to discipline the power of the mind by directing it to action. Most people, unfortunately, are quietly content with being servants of other people with minds that are stronger than theirs to give them directives. But in so doing this, they inadvertently give up their divinity. Whatever it is that you want to accomplish, you have to first see it in your mind's eye. Make your desired thought become as ritualistic as waking up in the morning and washing your face and brushing your teeth. Well, you don't have to think about it because you're so accustomed to doing it. Writing down your intention on a blank piece of paper also allows the mind to refrain from its normal groove by directing it on your purpose, embodying what you want to attract. I want you to realize that the mind is the transfer agent that must get us from where we are to where we want to be. Let me say that again. The mind is the transfer agent that must get us from where we are to where we want to be. Anything that you plant in the soil of your mind, if properly nurtured, it will grow. For the reach of the mind is truly infinite. Now, when you look at your goal, whatever it may be, and begin to think of possible ways of achieving it, know that you're building an active bridge to the subconscious mind. Now, since your mind is not used to this activity, you will begin to feel a sluggish reaction in the mind because like a child at play, being told it's time to go by its parents, the mind resents being called to task and responds sluggishly. Usually when it acts that way, most people quit in their efforts. The reason this happened is because your mind has learned through many years of inactivities that hard work is not a part of life. But here is where it's very important that you stay steadfast for it is like doing exercise for the very first time. It's exhausting for not much appears to happen and the early results can be disappointing. But with daily efforts, you soon find yourself doing with ease and seeing results in what was first difficult and awkward. So do not be discouraged no matter how trivial your first efforts may be if you have not done this before. Remember, the mind is the most unexplored, richest soil known to men. What you're doing here is very important for your placing your goal in your subconscious mind, and it will accept it as a seed. Like planting a seed, the soil must have enough moisture and care to begin the germination process. Likewise, you must cultivate the mind by planting the same seed or idea over and over in order for it to begin to grow in the subconscious mind. These is what I call concentration sessions, which will help you to accomplish two important things. One is, they help to train the mind into the habit of discipline thought. And two, they plant the seed of your intention deep in your subconscious mind, causing it to germinate and eventually grow roots. This exercise will guarantee that you reach your goal no matter what it is. Focusing the mind on what you want will open up a world of invisible forces we term natural ether energy, using an English expression. This is the same energy that gave life, form, breath, cells, and order to the universe. Natural ether energy is simply universal energy that exists everywhere, either in potential or active form. The word potential is from the word potent, which is powerful from potus, which means capable of being, but not yet in existence. Just like your thoughts, an etheric or spiritual thing. And the word active is from the word active, which means to draw out that which works effectively in operation. That's the physical aspect. 
And since our thoughts are drawn out from the mind, it stands to reason that a comprehensive understanding of the working of thoughts, which are vibrations and the techniques for controlling them, one would be able to achieve anything they can conceive. I want you to realize that there are no qualities in the universe that are not found in the human body. For instance, an atom is a complete replica of the solar system with electrons encircling the nucleus, just as planets revolve around the sun. You are simply a microcosm of the universe. So instead of identifying with the individual self, find your larger identity by merging with the cosmos itself, becoming a cosmosin. The universe works through you, but to accept this as a reality, you must know the facts about who and what you are and what you are capable of doing. And that lesson starts with the brain. Your brain is very unique for it acts like a holographic computer. And although there are physical parts of the brain involved in memory, like the amygdala, the hippocampus, and the cerebellum, you also have the etheric aspect that acts as a higher drive, where memories are stored called the mental reservoir, where each of you retrieve your thoughts from that goes to your personal mind, you call mind. Your brain is produced by ether, and your brain synapse deals with magnetism, which unites your thought process into brain etheric seeds you call neurotransmitters that melts down into etheric fluid and becomes active creative sparks of electricity within your synapses. Now, if you understand magnetism and electricity, you'll realize that they're one and the same. If you have electricity and you speed up its vibration, it turns into magnetism and vice versa. So it simply means what you think you will attract for the ether fluid that your brain produces is a kind of life we ancients call mind that feeds off of the mental for reasoning and thought process. Magnetism is like magic that attracts the power of influence. So again, whatever you think you will attract, your thoughts will make sure of it. So whatever it is that you want, all you really have to do is think it. For as you think about your intention, it moves farther and farther into the realm of possibility, taking on legitimate form. And gradually, what seems like a dream begins to materialize. And finally, one day when you least expect it, the manifestation of your intentions presents itself. I often hear people who talks about the law of attraction. They always use the word belief, but belief in fears doubt. You see what I'm saying? I encourage you to know. You must know that you can through the use of your mind. Do what you want to do, where you want to do it. You are under no constraint other than habits and self-doubt. Let me say that again. You must know that you can through the use of your mind, do what you want to do, where you want to do it. You are under no constraint other than habits and self-doubt. I'm Kef Ray and this is Back to the Basic. Like, share, and subscribe. Facts we stated, you wanna know something, go back to basics Most saw trapping was called the matrix The world frivolized, yet it's hard to face it So I spread truth, hope you embrace it Watch, like, share, bring in awareness